Hello everyone, hope you're doing well today. I hope you're taking your time to breathe, drinking water, eating, taking care of your basic needs. That's a big theme of my life personally. I tend to forget myself. There's this weird training that I have, I guess. This weird training, it's called childhood, where truly it was easier for me to survive if I forgot about what my needs were and focused on making sure everybody else was okay. Somehow in my little kid brain, in order to cope with the environments I was living in, it was better to sacrifice yourself and be at service of other people. That's totally a fine thing. When it comes from a place of love and when it's a conscious choice to say, I'm going to step back here and give of myself to someone else who's in need. But when you don't know how to do that and it's just your default, you're giving from a place that is drained. Part of what I've been learning recently, especially when it comes to learning how to love my body, learning how to be at peace with the way she looks, with the way she feels, with all of the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows, of my cycle and my feminine energy and all of those sorts of things. A huge part of why I was at odds with myself was because I was taught that it was selfish to pay attention to what you need. And it's selfish to say, no, I'm not gonna focus on anyone else. I'm only gonna focus on myself. Part of my growth and my learning these days is to say, okay, which areas am I forgetting myself? And to give that area a lot of attention and gentleness and speak kindness and love over it. One of those things for me is with my body for sure. And so in this video, I wanted to share with you a few different mental health practices that I do personally that help me love my body. And some of these things are really practical and they're almost like, well, duh, of course. And some of them I'll take some time to really unpack and explain what I mean. So sit tight, get some water, get a cup of tea, whatever makes you feel cozy and focused, and I hope you find this interesting. So the first thing, it feels like a pretty obvious one, it's to eat what makes you feel good. Not necessarily what is healthy or what is, you know, deemed as the best way to eat. Start a food journal and write down the things that make you feel good and write down the things that make you feel like, eh, nope, no way. Your body's gonna communicate with you what foods are harmonious with you. And so if you're eating something and in the moment it tastes so good, right? But then afterwards you feel bloated, you feel groggy, you feel like you need to spend too much time in the bathroom, maybe? <laughs> Honestly, there is a common ground between this where you can eat foods that make you feel good in the moment that taste delicious for you and also make you feel good throughout the day. <laughs> and so a lot of it is just trial and error, figuring out what that is for you. For me personally, it's kind of avoiding more raw foods. They usually make me feel kind of sick. Sometimes it's just the amount of food that I'm eating. Like I don't eat enough throughout the day and I just eat one big meal or two big meals and that usually makes me feel kind of sick. It's better for me, I've realized, to eat small meals throughout the day and just snack and really eat like a little bird. I talk a little bit more about the food that I eat on my Patreon and I have a beautiful little community over there of one patron. Thank you for being there. I love you. And I know that that community is going to grow the more I talk about it. And so if you're interested in seeing more about my life, my day to day, really personal style tips, live chats, access to my insight on style and um, personal growth, mental health, you get exclusive access to my life over on Patreon. So go ahead and check that out and see if that sits right with you to support me in that way and if you want access to that beautiful community that is starting to grow. <laughs> so yeah, finding the foods that make you feel good, keeping a journal is a good way to do that. Really simple things like I ate this, this, and this for lunch, 
and you know, four hours later, I felt like this. I was still hungry after I ate that. It wasn't nourishing for me or whatever. Number two is to wear clothes that are within your lines, wearing colors that melt into your skin and things like that. My channel is all about personal style, really. And part of being able to love your body is to really just accept it for what it is, accept the curves, the shapes that are forming within you, accept the angles that are in them. If you're busty, own it. If you're flat chested, own it. You know, if you're really skinny and you've had a hard time with that throughout your life, learn to accept it. Learn to say, this is how I'm built. There's nothing wrong with this. And build your wardrobe around the things that make your body feel good when you put them on. I have a lot of videos on my channel about that, so definitely stick around if you're new here. Um, and check those out. But yeah, and then color-wise, I'm trying to learn more about skin tones, skin undertones, and things like that. I, I think that I'm personally having a hard time because I have an olive undertone. So sometimes I lean cool, sometimes I lean warm. I'm not really sure where I fit yet. Like, there are colors that I wear that make me feel like I look sickly, and so I try to wear more makeup but then there are days where I wear colors that suit my skin, and so it makes me feel like, oh, maybe I just need some lipstick and mascara, and like I need more definition, more than I need like blush or bronzer or whatever to give life to my face. Number three would be to find a form of exercise that makes you feel good. Okay, not something that's trendy, not something that you think everybody else is doing to lose weight, What's most important is that you feel comfortable within your own skin, especially if you're just starting out. It's gonna be really hard to keep up with a new habit if it is overwhelming. I really wanted to be a runner for a while and my body is just like, Fran, Fran, you've gotta chill out with that. That's just, that's too much for me. <laughs> but what I found is that the form of exercise that not only feels really good and deeply meditative for me, really connects to my spirit is yoga. So maybe it's something that is slower, something that is a bit more um, gentle. But what's beautiful about it is that it still builds strength. Like I feel very strong when I'm doing yoga and it helps me with my breath work and my meditative practices as well. And so that kind of aligns all of my values into one. It's so important to move your body because when energy gets stagnant in you, that's typically when your body feels like, ugh. Number four, this one is really difficult for me, but I've been practicing this, is to spend more time with yourself naked. Ah! <laughs> I am such a kid, but a kid wouldn't mind being naked, honestly. I don't think they realize that it's a thing that is weird. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, here I am. And so getting that back to that childlike state where it's like, no, it's just my body and I can dance and I can roll around and I can run. And, and it's just so objective. Like, no, no child is sitting there. I mean, I have yet to meet a child who is sitting there saying like, oh, my belly's too big or oh, my arms are weird or I hate my shoulders. You learn those things. And so the more you can just spend time being compassionate and objective with yourself, like instead of saying, I hate my shoulders, what do they do? You know, these are my shoulders, they support me. These are my hips, they help me walk. These are my feet, they hold me up as I prepare beautiful food for myself. Speak more about their purpose and their actions while you're not wearing clothes. Thank your body for the things that it does and for the way that it is, rather than breaking it down and speaking cruel things over it because you are comparing yourself to other bodies. Oh, our, our bodies are so scrutinized as women especially, for, for men too, but as women especially, like, it's always like you're to this or you're to that, and it's never you're just right and you're perfect. And I want to tell you today that your body is just right and it is perfect, okay? Whether or not you know what your kibby body type is. This kind of goes with the last one where you spend more time looking forward at yourself instead of down at yourself. Like, your body looks different when you're looking down at it than when you're looking 
in a mirror. And so the more time you spend like in the mirror observing your body and the less time you spend looking down at your body, I think that it changes the relationship you have with it as like equals and not, um, you know, condescending. What do you think? Um, the next one would be to create a fun photo shoot. There's something really cool about modeling and not even like professionally, but just getting your photos taken and seeing somebody else's perspective of you. I've gotten my photos taken so many times and I'm always amazed at what images the photographer thinks are the most beautiful because I personally look at some things and I'm like, I look, I don't look that great there. But somebody else saw me without all of my baggage about how I look. Somebody else looked at me and said, no, that's beautiful. Or I love this picture of you. And there's something that's so validating about it. Everybody sees you differently. Everyone has different perspectives. And so maybe somebody would point out something about you that you didn't notice about yourself. Number seven would be to speak loving and kind words to your body. The way that you talk to a friend who is feeling down on themselves. These, this kind of goes with what I was just saying previously, but like the things you say to yourself, I highly doubt you would ever say that to somebody else about their body. You know, you would come in and you'd uplift and encourage your friend. And so why don't you treat your body like it's a close friend because it is. It's been with you through everything. It has seen everything you have seen. It remembers things that you can't even remember. That your brain has lovingly protected from you. Your body still holds that because it was there, which is a mind-blowing concept to me. And so the same way that you would speak to a friend who is being hard on themselves, speak to yourself that way. And that's usually with kindness and with love. One of my favorite things to do recently is to moisturize. Yes, I know, I know, I'm sure you've heard this before. Spending time with your body is so special. Recently, I've been putting oil on my body, just all over my arms and really spending time doing that on my chest, on my stomach, my back, my butt, my legs, my feet. Massaging my feet is such a treat that I've been giving myself. Massaging my skin, doing facial massage and things like that. Doing it without a mirror. Just literally just being with your body and touching it and just loving, love her, okay? Just love her. <laughs> the more you spend time with yourself and you don't ignore all of those little things about yourself and you start to integrate them and shine light on them, the more you can love what you've been given. Just speaking about this, this is like the least anxious I've been making a video. And so just taking care of what you have and then watching it flourish afterward is like, the next thing would be to develop a meditation or a breathwork practice. This is a really hard practice to start if you've never done it like that or if you have never spent time with yourself alone and in the quiet. If you are one of those people like me who need a lot of stimulation, it is so difficult to just be still and breathe consistently. It is so hard if you have anxiety and depressive uh, energy and things like that where your thoughts are scary and it's hard to sit with them and to watch them move through without taking them personally. But it is such a gift to yourself and to your mind to slow yourself down to breathe all of your energy in and to release all of the energy that does not belong to you. Because a lot of the time, at least in my experience, the thoughts that I have that come in and berate me are not my voice. They are the voices of people around me or people I grew up with or the media. And so by developing this breath practice and this meditative practice, which I'm not perfect at, and I'm, it's still something that stresses me out, honestly, because it's so difficult to just sit with myself. It is a discipline more than it's something that like I really deeply enjoy, but it's also something that like, I know is good for me and I know helps me sleep soundly and helps my nightmares honestly and my intrusive thoughts to simply just call in all of the energy that belongs to me and hold it close and to witness it <laughs> and to notice the thoughts that come by that do not align with my light 
that do not align with the ways that I want to speak to myself. I mean, maybe you've heard this quote before, I forget who says it, but your thoughts create your reality. What you are looking all around for and scanning the horizon for are things that are happening here. They might not even be in connection to your actual reality. They might be in connection to something that has happened to you in the past. And so by developing a meditative practice or a breathwork practice, it pulls you back into the present and it slurps you back in to the space that is loving and supportive and kind. It reminds you of what belongs to you and what you can just say, nope, that's not me. That's somebody else's false perception of me. That's somebody else's expectation that I'm trying to live up to. It doesn't belong to me. And so I can let it go. And I can watch it go. You can visualize it leaving. I just, I could talk about that one for a long time. Because that's probably the heaviest thing that was on me that kept me from really truly accepting myself, my desires, the things that I wanted in life was voices that existed outside of my being. That was a lot. I hope that you could grab onto it. In fact, I have one more thing for you. Something that helped me really love my body, um, and this is a, a practice, a discipline, is to be in tune with my energy and to learn my feminine cycles. To learn that actually I don't need to force things to happen in my life. But I could talk about that one for a really long time. But there's something about being in harmony with your cycles. And I'm speaking particularly about your menstrual cycle as a woman or a uterus bearing human. To get to know your body when your energies are high, when you're feeling lively, when you need to retreat. And so a part of that is spending more time with yourself, being alone with yourself. So that's kind of like a little bonus tip. If you want me to dive in deep on any of these topics further, let me know. I am really passionate about the connection between our mental health and our body image. All of this stuff that you practice Um, and you learn and you become disciplined and become habits. And you can change the ways that you see yourself. That's gonna help you be able to express your truest self, feel confident in what you're wearing, when you own the things that are yours, when you own yourself, because truly you belong to yourself. And any level of service that you offer to the world ought to come from a space that is solid and sure and true and honest. It's ultimately a gift that you give to the world. Nourish yourself, nourish your mind and your body and your spirit. And from that space is where you give. (laughs) I didn't realize this was gonna turn into a sermon. Um, This is a more serious video for my channel. I feel like most of my videos are pretty light, but maybe not, maybe not. Are my videos, do they feel light? Like, am I just this walking juxtaposition? I feel that way most of the time where it's like, woohoo, I'm goofy, I'm silly, I like to have fun. And then also like, yeah, but mental health and body image and your personal style is more serious than you think. And this isn't trivial or superficial or anything. Okay, (laughs) okay, I'm done. We'll have another styling video pretty soon because I have a very special collaboration that I'm about to do with a brand that I love. And I'm really excited to share a few pieces with you for at home, for coziness. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about this stuff. I'm sure there are things that I missed. So make sure that you comment down below. Tell me what you think. And if you want more insight from like my own brain, like if you have questions and stuff like that, that you want me to go more in depth on, and with anything in this list, definitely go join me on Patreon. That's like my biggest heart for even starting a Patreon is to build a community of people who want to talk about these sorts of things and want to grow in this way because I think that style is an overflow of how you feel about yourself, is an expression of who you want to be, and also who you already are. So definitely go support me over there if you feel so inclined. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Thanks for offering your attention. 
and your energy to this channel. I truly appreciate you all and I will talk to you very soon. Bye.